Hello, welcome to SCR1 TNO Knitting Project Podcast. This is episode 24 and it is Thursday the 27th of June 2019. My name is Sharon and I'm coming to you from Surrey in the UK where I live with my family, three cats and a dog. So apologies if I get any interruptions. Um, welcome to any new viewers, welcome back to any returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, this is a podcast all about my knitting primarily. I've got a tiny little bit of spinning today as well. Um, and it's all about how I deal with having very, far too many whips and far too many urges to cast everything on. So you'll, it'll all come self-explanatory as I go through, but basically I do different projects on different days of the week and it's a rolling rotation of six days so they all get love on a different day because I'm busier some days than others. And this week I have been a lot busier than normal. So you'll have to bear with me. There's not a huge amount of knitting content this week, but we'll go through it and I'll explain as I go. Admin. You can find me as scr one tno on Instagram and Ravelry and the email address for the podcast is scr one tno at outlook.com if you want to get in touch. Um, we have a Ravelry group which is scr one tno Knitting Project. If you search it under the Ravelry Groups tab you should find it. Uh, we have a new section in the Ravelry group. Um, I discovered last week when I was doing the video that YouTube has a limit to the amount of characters you can put underneath your video for the show notes. So the show notes are down there. Um, there is a link down there that will t link you to the Ravelry group. If you go check the Ravelry group, there is now going to be show notes for each episode. Um, because I can get everything on there and all the links on their work, I have tried working it. Um, I've tried clicking on them and they all seem to work. So um, yeah, th that you will find them on there and I'll keep that thread. I haven't decided whether I'm going to lock the thread so you can't comment on it or whether just to keep it open. If you've got any questions, you can comment then on the relevant show notes. That might just be worth it as well. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, please do come join us in the Ravelry group. Um, we've got two knit alongs going along at the moment. One is for Stephen West Penguodo. Um, which I got to finish mine earlier on this year but that's running till the 31st of August so if you're considering making one if you're already started one whips are allowed do cut, drop into the thread let us know what you're doing and also there is a May Mini Madness make along uh, going on until the end of August and that's for anything using stra scrappy project or minis um, there's a gorgeous hippo in there there's some amazing socks in there there's a beautiful cow that my lovely friend jenny has finished it's lovely it's the litmus cow all perfect projects if you know of anybody that's making anything with minis or scrappies let them know get them to pop it in because we're getting some really lovely prizes for that one really they're mostly minis um but yeah gorgeous gorgeous prizes for that one so please do spread the word on that one um I'm looking down because I have show notes so yeah hopefully I think that's it for that um yeah if you've got a question please do pop into the um any questions thread and ask a question and introduce yourself in the um introduction thread for new members um I don't get in there as much as I like although I'm a little bit more active at the moment um and I, if you see a love button chances are that's me I do love everything if I can if I fight, get chance um but we have a, an amazing moderator, a girl called Katie. She's lovely and she she answers to everything. She's amazing, absolutely fantastic. I'm so grateful to her for having, for doing all that she does. And, um, so yeah, that's our, all the admin I think I've got this week. Um, no, it's not. I have a little bit more admin, I've just thought. Um, I have got a couple of events coming up, which I need to talk, I'd like to talk about. Um, first of all, I'm going to the Southern Wool Show on the Saturday, which is the 31st of August. If you're going and you want to meet up, could you just drop me a message at some point, either on Ravelry or email, whichever. Let me know you're going. Um, I'm going on the Saturday. I am taking a class and I can't remember what time the class is off the top of my head, but I will look that up. Um, if you want to do a meet up, I'd love to sort of at least stop for a coffee. Maybe I know they've got a like an eating area upstairs maybe we could just grab a table and sit and have a chat for a little while um so let me know if you're going that would be great that's the 31st of august and the other one i'm going to is my lovely friend kelly from lay family yarns is now beginning to run retreats and i'm going to get to go in one uh, to one in november so i'm really excited about that um, i'm also going to see if i can 
Ben Hubby's arm to buy me another one for Christmas and to have in the new year to look forward to. So hopefully I'll be going on a couple of those. But when I get the date for that one, I will let you know the date for that one. But I know the one I'm on is actually full, but I'm so looking forward to it. It's going to be so much fun. So yeah, so if you want to go on a retreat, I think she may still have um, a space on the second the week after on the other November retreat, but do have a look. Go check it out. So day one is socks and I have an FO. Oh, well, actually, I have two FOs. It, it, there is two of them. My emergency rainbow socks are now off the needles. Um, at the weekend, I did brownie camp with my brownies. We went to PGL, which is affectionately nicknamed Parents Get Lost, and it's an activity centre where you we did um, climbing walls, giant swings, zip wire archery all sorts and it was great and in between any downtime i did get which was very very few and far between i knit on my socks and i managed to the girls were fascinated as well they were fascinated in the colors and they were fascinated to see these socks suddenly magically appear before their eyes um that i managed to get them finished which is really exciting they are i did block them yesterday they're still slightly damp they're a little bit on the wet side but this is Dragon Hill Studio in their Chepstow sock with Sparkle. And it's a rainbow colourway. I'm afraid I can't remember the colourway name, but it's one of their ones that they have a lot. And I've also twinned with the lovely Laura of the Lonely Knitter podcast, who is also knitting these at the moment. So yeah, emergency socks off the needles, which is great because these have been on the needle since February. <laughs> But it was high time I had no longer had them on the needles. So that meant, of course, I had to cast on another pair of emergency socks. And it's hanging out in my love to sew bag. I love this little bag because it's so I can just pop it in my in my handbag. I'm going to a wedding tomorrow. There is a good chance that this is going with me in this bag. And I am now currently working on. Did I not put the I did put the label in here, yay! This is the Yarn Badger, who dyes the most amazing self-striping yarn. And this is part of her celebration range, and it's called Invitation. Now, her shop is actually down for the moment because she's going to Woolfest, and then her shop is moving to an actual dedicated website. I have linked it in the show notes. Um, but you'll have to bear with her until she's back from Woolfest. And this is, isn't that fab? Excuse my really badly wound ball of wool, but I have a ginger kitten. Well, she's not a kitten, she's one year old now. I have a ginger cat who, every time I start my ball winder up, comes and bats my swift. And my ball winder doesn't like it. So that's that. And this is how it started. So I've just done a one by one rib. Isn't that pretty? It's going to be so lovely. And that's as far as I got. Now this is again my emergency sock. So this is where I, what I did while I was at the remainder of the camp after I'd finished the other sock. So that's cool. I love it. It's so pretty. I'm doing it on 25 millimeter licky needles on a 60 stitch stitch account. But yeah, I do love that. And it's my needle cosies from Whimsy Stitches. The rainbow. So yeah, that's my <coughs> emergency sock for this time. I have got normal socks on the needles, but I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't got back to them at the moment. They are a pair of um, jelly roll socks. I just haven't had chance to knit them this week because it's been a busy week. And the only reason I got those socks done was because they were my emergency socks and they were with me at camp. So yeah, that's day one socks this week. So day two is shawl day, and that's hanging out in my dandelion and dogwood project bag. I love this project bag. And it fell yesterday, which was the only day of the week where I actually had any time to knit, which was fortuitous for the podcast. So I am doing the Matham shawl, which is a shawl from the Shawl Society Um from last year from Curious Handmade and it's a half moon 
show and I'm doing mine in all different colours I'm using Toad Hollow yarn and in their Sock Toad colourway not colourway sorry Sock Toad base different colourways and the kit I'm using is their Lost in Time kit um, which is for the Lost in Time shawl but as I can't crochet I decided I wanted to use it for something different because I really really like the colours so this is how far I've gone I've just putting the fourth colour in so that's the first colour the blue and then it went into the pink then there's a little pop I'm just going to move my coffee there's a little pop of the variegated there hopefully you can see that and then I'm just going into the purple on the top I did the first row literally last night before I fell asleep of the purple in actual fact if you show it bunched up you can, there you go you can see that much better there um, so that's this one that's the purple and then the last colour which is quite a big lace section is going to be apologies for the crunching this green and I've got these are all 50 grams these colours this one's 100 grams so hopefully I'll have enough because it's going to be really big by the time I get to this section because it's a half moon construction it doubles in size every so often um, so yeah that's the and I'm using what am I using I'm using uh, Knit Pro Symphonies and I was there last week and I managed to do that this uh, literally last night so yeah that's a little stitch marker from C Hannah of the Corner of Craft there's a little fox with flowers in her hair but yeah so yeah that's my Matham shawl I really like it it's so pretty I love those colours I love those colours I mean it's not like I'm wearing them is it <laughs> I love those colours so yeah um, I'm really enjoying it it's a lovely knit and those are long term viewers of the podcast will know that I have already started a Matham shawl and I have lost the entire project, the project bag, the, the project, the needles, everything. I have lost it. I have no idea where it is. Um, I'm hoping, I'm going camping soon, I'm hoping it might turn up in my camping equipment, perhaps in my bedding bag or something. Because um, the last time I remember having it was camping last year. So... I have looked everywhere where it would normally be and it's not there so I'm hoping fingers crossed it's going to turn up at some point and I'll do that one as well. So yeah that's day two shawl day and that's the Matham shawl. So day three is garment day and that's hanging out in my sheep and balls bag from Busy Pottering and it is the understated sweater by Hokey Locatelli in Stranded Dye Works Flower Crown yarn which is a DK which apparently I forget to say every week when I'm editing it back I always go you forgot to say it was a DK again it's double knit so it's actually going quite quickly and it is there we go that's a picture of it so it's a little boxy sweater v-neck boxy and it's got some ribbing details on the shoulder And that's from the Interpretations Book 6. And this is the yarn. So this is 100% um, merino, merino, superwash merino from Stranded Dye Works, which is the lovely Amy. And as you can see, <coughs> it's got it's a grey with these beautiful pops of colour now there are so many pops of colour in this it's really difficult to see there are some brighter ones but there's some really subtle ones as well uh, it's just so pretty when it's knitted up now I am going to remove my coffee to the other side of the room because this is quite big I'm also suffering with it not staying on the needles at the moment again Knit Pro Symphonies That was my tape measure going for a wonder. Oh, it's all, it's all not working. Right, so here we go. This is it. 
doesn't look much because it's all scrunched up on the needles. Um, now I was hold it upside down. I was there and I did all that. That's quite impressive because these are long rows. I think I am something like five centimetres off doing the bottom ribbing now. So this is possibly on the home stretch. I may not get it finished this week, but I should hopefully get it finished by the week after the podcast. So yeah, that's the, it's really creased on there. But it's really not that creased in real life. How odd. Um, yeah, that's the understated sweater by Hokey Locatelli. That's a beautiful yarn that it is. I don't know whether you can see the colours on that. So pretty. And I'm alternating skeins. So I have got two skeins. The other one is on the floor, so I'm not going to get that. And um, I'm using the Helical Knitting Jogless Join tutorial from Grace of Babbles Yarns on YouTube. And <clears throat> if you look, watch it, I would advise watching it while you're trying to do it. I mean, by all means, run watch through first, but if it doesn't make sense, don't worry. It will make so much sense when you're actually knitting it. it may, it's Once you have complete faith in her, what I did was I did it to a point in the video, paused her while I caught up, and then carried on that way. And it's, yeah, it's literally, it's magic. The girl has created magic. Brilliant. So, yeah, um, I'm using that. <laughs> Jogless join, hopefully... This will be done fairly soon. So it's got a ribbing on the back. And it's just stocking stitch. So at the moment this is a giant sock. And then obviously once I've got the body done, I have two very small sleeves because it's a boxy. So it's only got tiny sleeves and the neck to do. And then that will be off the needles. So I reckon by midsummer, when it is far too warm to wear it, it will be done. But it'll be lovely to look forward to wearing in the autumn, won't it? So that's the... Unstated sweater by Hokey Locatelli and that is day three garment day. So day four um, is now my crochet day because I finished um, my friend Kelly's mitts that I was knitting her for Christmas um, last week. So I'm now moved it to doing my crochet projects and I am doing a Battenberg blanket by Cherry Heart. Um, yeah, Sandra Paul, Cherry Heart. It's that one. That one there. Now, I am not doing it quite the same as she's done hers because I was watching the lovely Helen of Giddy Knits podcast and she was saying that she was going to do hers in a strip. And that makes far more sense in my head to me because I'm a brand new crocheter and I don't really know what I'm doing, to be honest. So this is the yarn I'm using at the moment. These are all West <coughs> West Green Loft Yarns mini boxes that I'm using. And so that's what, the one I've started with. And this is the little strip I've started. There we go. So my idea is, well it's really pretty on screen doesn't it? <laughs> My idea is I am going to do, I've got five colours in a box, so I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, and that is going to be the width of my blanket, I think. I'm going to see how long it is, um, starting with the plain colour. And then I, I'll either keep that as the width or I will repeat that five. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet. Um, but I'll get back to you on that. So that's the minis from West Green Loft Yarns. I just realised I'm showing you the back. Show you. No, I'm not. That's the front. What mind about? I put that on there so I knew which is the front. So yeah, that's, so that's the minis. And then obviously I've got two colours I haven't wound up yet and added in. And the plain is some undyed sparkle from Mothy and the Squid. Now my friend Kelly is sitting there going, but I dyed you pink to go with that. Yeah, I know you did, hun, but it's so gorgeous and it's three skeins and it's the perfect length for um, a Tegna. And I really, really, really want a baby pink Tegna and I'll just let you see when it's got to be a Tegna. 
So I am now using <laughs> some undyed sparkle <laughs> from Mothy in the Squid, which I happen to have. I have something like five skeins of this, I think, lying around. I have no idea why I bought five skeins of undyed sparkle because I'm fairly certain the reason I bought it was to use it as heels and toes in socks. That is a lot of heels and toes. <laughs> so anyway, I've nicked it for this. So that's from Mothy and the Squid and it's just some undyed sparkle. And my minis. So there are my minis that I've done on this one. And then my next one that I'll do will be, the next one I'll add in will be that one. And then that will be the plain. But it's not it's not totally plain, there are some speckles in it. But it's plainish. It's not as variegated as that one. And then the idea is I've got slightly plainer one, speckle, slightly plainer one, speckle, slightly plainer one. Now I'm not sure whether all of her boxes are like that. Let's have a look. There's another box. No, see that one's all got well actually I suppose it is really that's the speckle isn't it so that's the speckle and that's the speckle and then those three are plainer so hopefully if all the boxes are like that then that's the method I'll use if not I'll fudge it um, and that was the box I showed you last week so yeah I'm really really enjoying it and this as I said this is um, Helen from Giddy Knits said about doing hers in strips and yes it means I've got to sew in ends but I'm a willing end weaver although um, Ellie from Craft House Magic <laughs> this is going to be really cheeky if you're watching you revolutionised my life with sewing in ends on knitting if you could do a little tutorial on sewing in ends on crochet I would be really really grateful because I don't know whether you do it any differently but I tried it and it didn't work quite as well on my crochet as it does on my knitting but um, somewhere on Ellie's um, Vlogmas vlogs, she shows in how she sh she shows she shows even how she sews in her ends on her knitting, and I just looked at it and went, oh wow, that makes so much sense. And I, I've used it ever since, and I love it. So yeah, Ellie, <laughs> if you can, can you let me know how you sew in your ends on crochet, please. But yeah, so that's the start of my little blanket, and I absolutely love it. And I believe today is nah can't be not if yesterday was shawl day today must be garment day actually I must be getting doing the uh doing the understated today so this must be tomorrow oh work it out oh work it out I have it all in my diary actually I literally put it on a recurring entry in my diary um so I know which day I'm on in the morning so I don't have to sit there and work it out so yeah, that's my Battenberg blanket, which is currently hanging out in my giant bag from So Beautiful by Nicola, which has got a hot air balloon on it, so it had to come and join me. That's a bad isn't it? And it's brilliant because I've got all the boxes in here and the blanket and everything else and the hook and yeah. I would tell you what hook I was using, but I can't find it. I'm assuming it's in there somewhere, or it's downstairs in the sofa cushion somewhere too. So yeah, that's day four. Crochet day! So day five is mystery blanket day, and I finished my Arabian Nights blanket. Now, I haven't got it with me to show you because it's far too big to show you on the podcast. So I am going to put in some photos now, hopefully. I can get this to work okay um, and chat you through it now um, this blanket was a blanket I started in 2009 and it's part of the Debbie Abrahams mystery blanket club that she does every year and in 2010 in the summer I lost my mum and I was just doing the edging around the edge um, and I'd done the first side and I was halfway down the second side and I, I just didn't I couldn't face working on it and I, I was literally working on it when I got the phone call. So I put it to one side and it sat in a bag for many, many years. <laughs> and then a few weeks ago, I pulled it out and thought, Do you know what, I'd actually quite like to get this done. It's just got an edging. I looked at the edging and I was like, I have no idea where 
I got the idea for this edging from. It's not the edging that, that Debbie recommended to go with it because I didn't have enough of the yarn left to do her edging because my, my tension at that point was really loose. So um, I'd run out of yarn and I looked at it and went, I can't do what the one that she recommends. So I found this different edging and I thought well, I'll do each section, um, each square a different colour and I've planned it all out and it all works and I found an edging pattern I liked and I looked at it and sort of nine years later going well I don't know where I got that edging pattern from this is gonna be fun and I'm thinking I might have to rip out the edging of the side I've done and um, redo a different edging and it's not like it was at the top so I could make a feature of a different the different edge so I've pulled it all out of the bag and inside the bag is a piece of paper where I have written down the pattern instructions for the edging I looked at it and we're like this is amazing well done past me because that now means I can finish it without any trouble so I finished it I didn't um, I'd already blocked the middle of it I, I'm thinking I may have blocked the blocks as I went along makes, makes sense I do that now so that's probably what I did back then um, and when I got to do the edge I didn't wet block it I just literally ironed it with a steam iron directly on it it's um it's done in cotton glacé rowing cotton glacé it's 100 percent cotton and i literally just because i could see then that i was pulling the edging out properly so i um I, I just ironed it straight ironed it and then i got hubby to take some photos of me which hopefully you're watching now um while i do this voiceover in the garden i'm really pleased it's off the needles um originally my middle daughter did want it but she's decided now that it's far too much responsibility given all the work that's gone into it i don't think she was over keen on the history of it too to be fair to her so um it's now going to live i've got dark sofas so it can live on the back of my sofa and i think it'll look really pretty so yeah that's day five mystery blanket day and one of my mystery blankets finally off the needles which is awesome i'm really pleased that i've done that and now i will have to go back to um either last year's or this year's depending which one i decide i want to do so day five mystery blanket day so day six is scrappy project day and um scrappy project day this week was tuesday and i did back-to-back -back rainbows and guides um, my daughter is a rainbow leader and needed help with her pack this week so um, I did her rainbows and then I had my guides and both sessions were active sessions so I couldn't just sit there and knit um, so I'd hardly did anything so you're going to have to bear with me on this um, I have very little to show progress wise but because I haven't shown the project for so long I thought I would share it with you so I hope you don't mind and it is my bits and bobs blanket by the lovely Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears here we go isn't it pretty I adore it there's a real theme to them quite my colours today isn't there everything I'm holding holding up is pastel sort of blue and pink um, which is really weird because there should be a lot of green in it too but there isn't um because that's my other favorite color so that's my blanket now i got today and this is another little progress keeper from hannah of corner of craft it's a little sloth with a flower crown and that's how much i did so i needed a couple of rows because these are very long rows i know it doesn't look like it on these needles but they really are really really are and i am using <coughs> That is the leftover yarn ball from my advent from Lay Family Yarn in 2018. So I'm nearly through that now. And I'm using as the other colour a, I'm going to call it sheepies, it's not the right um, pronunciation, but it's a sheepies well in the melting macaroon colourway. Now I had some of this left over that I'd rewound, so it started with the blue. So it's got the blue at the bottom, you can see there. So that background has got the blue at the bottom. So it's going to go through all the colour changes and then end up with the blue at the top. And that's as long as my blanket's going to be. Now there's an amazing amount of yardage on these things. I made a whole EDT out of one of these by Isabel Kramer. Um, there's a thousand meters so there's a lot of yardage on it 
and it's um, it's a cotton blend, I think. Yeah, 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. It's really soft. It's lovely. So when I run out of that, will be how long my blanket is. And I, I mean, I think we can agree I've got a fair amount to go yet, and it's already already a little way. So that's what it should do. It should end up with the blue, hopefully. And I've just made a magic knot ball with the leftovers of my advent calendar for this one and then I think I have a couple of others in here I've got this one which is leftovers of something can't remember what so there's that magic knot ball and this one now this is leftovers of one from Kelly Lay Family Yarn from the summer when she did a summer one last year and that's my leftovers from those ones so that will be my next two if I need them that's where I will go next with them so yeah that's my bits and bobs blanket I would show you the, the, the picture but it isn't in here no no picture so yeah it's the bits and bobs blanket by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And it's beautiful, it's so squishy and soft. So squishy and soft. I'm all about the blankets this week. So that's day six, Scrappy Project Day. So lastly is my cozy memory blanket. This hasn't got a day because it gets worked on every day. I do a square every morning, although apparently not this morning. I didn't do it this morning. I will do it later. And this is hanging out in my seaside bag from Busy Pottering. And it's my cozy memory blanket. Now I need to count up and see if I'm behind on this because I'm not sure whether I managed to do them all over the weekend because it doesn't seem to be quite as many as there should be. But my lovely friend Kelly um, did a little birthday advent countdown for me which I'm still going through because I didn't get the, to do them all because I added in some of my own from time to time when I finish things so this one is bakery bears it's really, really pretty this one's also bake, bakery bears as is this one actually that's bakery bears too I obviously pulled out three randomly at the same time that were bakery bears how funny is that that's Legacy Fibre Arts. That's pretty. That is Dragon Hill Studio. <laughs> that is from my sock. So this is what I meant about the fact that's why I'm behind on the birthday advent minis is because when I finish something, I try and put it in straight away. So this week, my birthday sock went in. My birthday sock went in. My rainbow sock went in. <laughs> oh dear, it's hot in here. I'm losing the will to live. And then this one is... Red and Rouge, Pink Lily. That's a really pretty colourway, that one. So yeah, that's my cosy memory blanket. As I said, I need to do a count up as I am slightly worried that I'm a square behind. So I'll need to kind of catch that up if I am. So the idea is that I do a square every day. And at the moment, I'm waking up in the morning and doing a square and watching um, the lovely Gainer um, Tales from Cookie Land and um, the lovely Rachel of the So Ray Me podcast um, doing their daily vlogs and it's been such a treat so in April I had Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful in May we had lovely Sherry from Ollie and Bella podcast and um, Helen from the Giddy Knits podcast doing one and then in June we've had um, Rachel from So Ray Me and Gaynor from Tales from Cuckoo Land I'm actually really need someone to do July I'm going to miss this <laughs> such a lovely way to wake up um, I do think that um, maybe Sophie from the spring snowflake podcast may be doing it um, so that'll be exciting if she is I wish we'd been chatting a little bit um, so I'm hoping that she's going to do it so yeah um, anybody else if anybody knows of anybody else that's uh, vlogging July please let me know I want to vlog our holiday in July we're going to our hot air balloon meet in France at the end last week of July first week of August but we're staying in a campsite so that's not going to be a daily vlog because I'm not going to be able to upload but I will do it when I get back after the fact 
so I will keep a daily vlog you just won't see it daily <laughs> um, I might vlog August because we've got a few bits and pieces going in um, so August might be fun so I might put pin it and pin in it and vlog August but um, my problem is when I'm not doing anything exciting literally all I'm doing is going to work coming home making dinner sitting on the sofa repeat <laughs> so it's not hopefully exciting <laughs> but yeah so that's my cozy memory blanket so i have a tiny bit of spinning um that isn't spinning which you'll see last week if you've watched i showed you a um spin i'd done from hedgerow yarns now hedgerow yarns the lovely jane has just started dyeing fiber and she very kindly asked me if i'd like to test spin her first dye one she did which was amazing and I said yes of course and this is how that first test spin has knit up isn't it lovely I'll give you a close up how pretty are those colours and that teal is just so perfectly hedgerow so Jane if you're watching that's how it's knit up isn't it gorgeous I have to say also I was so pleased about how even this spin is. There's the odd pop of sort of slightly bigger bit, fluffier bit, but really, well, my thoughts are that I'd quite like to make a jumper with the rest of it, um, which is why I've not sewn in my ends because if I need an extra bit, I can unravel this. And if I can spin this finely, this was done on a 3.75 millimeter needle. It's a perfect drape. So it's kind of a sport weight almost. Um, I mean, it's a, it would be a lovely loose DK. Can you imagine doing a boxy, maybe, in that? And it's so pretty. So I might spin with intention. Now, um, Grace of Babbles Travelling Yarns and Mina of the Knitting Expat Podcast are doing a smell, which is a spin and make-along. So the idea is that you spin all the yarn and then you make something with it. Um, and I, I kind of wasn't doing it because I didn't think I'd have the time but if I do get the time and I get all this spun up I might have a go at making the spinning it and then making this jumper so yeah Jane if you're watching that is it it is so beautiful you've done a fab job it's lovely this is so soft as well it's 100% merino it's butter kitten soft to quote full and vine yeah, so that's my spinning this week is an actual swatch knit up and I love it so nice so I have got some minis from Ducky Darlings now she's done a rainbow set and it's so pretty I missed out the first time around she did these they're called Minilicious Minis got in it's a garden party set and I missed out the first time round so I was really pleased when she did a second listing for them. Aren't they beautiful? So that's one set. And then another set I got from Duffy Darlings too. is a speckled set. I don't think I've shown these on the podcast. I think they've been sitting in the bottom of my acquisitions bag waiting for me to do it. They're so pretty. So that's my Ducky Darlings ones. And next up I had an order from Biff Sugar Yarns. Now apologies, this is a crinkly one. Um, and again, they're so pretty minis. I really like them. Sorry for the crinkling. There we go. Isn't that lovely? I'll turn it around. I really don't want to get them out if I don't have to. Very pretty. I do like her colours. They're so pretty. And also from Beef Sugar Yarns, I've treated myself to a single. And there's two reasons for this. First of all, I want to knit a Fuss Free Festival Shawl by Louise Tilbrook in a blue colour. Because I'd really like that shawl and I could redo one in blue um, I did one for a friend in a single about a year ago and it's so pretty and she wears it quite a lot and I'm like oh, it's so lovely 
So I thought I really want one in blues and whites in a single. This is a single. And the colourway is called Cove. Now my maiden name is Cove, so it was kind of meant to be. It was a blue and white single and it had literally my name on it. <laughs> Oh, you've got, to, you've got to love the justification we put in our heads, don't you, for buying these things. So funny. Oh, that's what it is. And it's the lovely Biff Sugar Yarns. And that's the colour. I love the speckles. Look at those speckles in there. So that's really pretty. <coughs> then there's a definite blue theme to my week this week. I also... The lovely Grace of Babbles Yarns had an update, which she hasn't had for a long while. That's her logo. And this is her Corridale Twist in August Sunset. I'll show you the label. Then I'm going to just undress it a little bit again. Blues, whites and pits, so pretty. These are going to be socks, without a doubt, they're going to be socks. They are probably going to be socks that I take to France with me. I'm sort of thinking that's where I'm going to knit them. So pretty. So yeah, that was Grace's update. And then I decided I'd like some of the Giddy Yarns update because she also had a lovely big up update. And she's just done um, a bedtime story collection. I love Helen's collections. I would have large skeins of all of them if I could. And this is the mini set. She's done a blanket bundle to go with them. She says trying to show all the colours. There we go. So pretty. So I've got a little mini set. And that's probably going to go in my Battenberg blanket to be honest. And again, that's her logo, Giddy Yarns. All the makers that I mention are linked in my show notes. So you should just be able to go on there, scroll through, find them and hit the link. And it should take you direct to their website. And I got this one too, which is a full size of the little blue one in there. And it's um, the Railway, Ch Railway Children. Because it was my favourite one of her colourways. And I could only afford one, I couldn't buy them all even though I wanted to and it speckles so pretty so yeah that's the railway children it's a good time story collection are oh, the other colors in this collection are so pretty I wanted them all so that's my acquisitions this week. Um, so podcasts, um, I watch loads of podcasts, loads and loads of them. I watch probably more podcasts than I do TV at the moment. Although I am currently very late to the party watching The Bodyguard and it is fantastic. I've been really enjoying that. Um, but I have watched Gainer of Tales from Cuckoo Land and Rachel from So Mary Daily doing their vlogs. Um, Ollie and Bella had a new episode out i haven't seen the end of that yet but what i have seen so far i've really enjoyed um helen of giddy knits she had her podcast out really enjoyed hers um she says blanking completely on the ones that she's watched this week bear with me um grace of bubbles traveling yarn she had a podcast out really enjoyed hers um i watched the knit girls i listened i'll come back to that actually in a minute um, Sweet Sparrow, she's had one out this week as well, I've watched hers, then I've watched my usual trio which is um, Geordie Knits, The Lonely Knitter and The Hairy Sheep, all three of them make my week, I adore them, they're really good, um, Laura of The Lonely Knitter, bless her's having a hard time at the moment and um, yeah I just wanted to go hug her really, bless her heart, um, please go give her some love, if you don't follow her podcast go check her out she's really really good i mean same with all of them to be fair go check them out now on my show notes which are both down here and on my Ravelry group there again there are direct links to their videos so you can just click on them and go watch them <clears throat> onto their youtube channels so i've put direct, direct direct links for all of those and I'm not going to just do the ones that I mention each week. I'm just going to keep them on there permanently because at some point I watch them. So if I watch a new one, I'll add it to the bottom. Um, 
Now, I also listened to, to two of them. I listened to the Knitball Girls, who are a lovely mother and daughter team, and I love that very much, which is, and it's really good if you are doing a job um, to be able to listen to a podcast without having to stop and just glance at the screen every time somebody holds something up. Um, I also listened to the Two Yous of Two Yous Fibre Adventures and they are the first podcast I ever listened or watched. Um, and again, they're an audio one and they are fab. They're two best friends um, and I absolutely adore them. They're so good. Um, they are the reason I knit for ED t-shirts by Isabel Kramer because that was the first thing they were knitting when I first got into listening to podcasts and was like, oh, what's that? And watch them and uh, we'll listen to them. So go check them out as well for a listening podcast. Um, <clears throat> and finally, all the makers I mentioned, also there are links down below to their shops. So you should be able to go straight down and click on them. If I you ever do it and there's not one there and I have obviously missed one, could you just drop me a, let, a, a note and let me know and then I will link it for you because... Um, I mean, I try and write notes as I'm listen, editing this back if I've missed anybody. Um, so I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> so that's it. I mean, finally, life. Um, you had a lot of the life stuff as I went through last week. Mainly I went to um, Brownie Camp at the weekend. We went on Friday. We came back on Sunday. Uh, the exhaustion you feel <laughs> at the end of Brownie Camp <laughs> is unbelievable um it's so worth it when you see the girls and uh, how much fun they've had but you are fit for nothing and the only thing i was fit for was um sewing in the ends on my mystery blanket which is why that one got finished because that's all i could do um so that and then since then i i've kind of been working and then um i did obviously did back to back Rainbows and guides on Tuesday and yesterday I worked full-time hours as well so I've not had an awful lot of crafting time this week hopefully um, this weekend I may get a little bit more I've got a wedding to go to tomorrow but there's some traveling to that so I should get some car knitting time hopefully and then um, Saturday I've got some time during the day but in the afternoon my lovely kids are taking me out for my birthday treat which is going to be an um, escape from a panic room so I'm really looking forward to that I'll tell you more about that next week um sunday i'm at home so hopefully a day off on sunday and then we go running into the next week which will be normal stuff nothing else special going on um so that was it that's that's a rundown of my week the girls are all okay my youngest has just come back from a trip to euro disney and had great fun although she's come back to a world of trouble because her car has got flat tire so <laughs> It's, it's always the way isn't it but you do feel sorry for them when they're 18 it's such a dose of life isn't it you go on holiday and then you come back to all the problems <laughs> love a heart um but my other two are fine uh animals are okay Belle's really recovered very well from her op um we still don't know quite what's going to go on with her long term but at the moment we're just counting every day as a blessing with her and she is a blessing she's absolutely gorgeous bless her heart so I think that's it from me this week. Um, hope you all have a great week wherever you are. I will see you next week. Take care. Bye.